Hey everybody, welcome to my watercolor painting videos and channel. If you like the videos you see, please uh, subscribe. I'm not uh, an expert watercolor painter by any stretch of the imagination. I just happen to enjoy it. And if I pass anything along that makes you encouraged to want to paint, or it seems like it's going to be fun, then I've done pretty much what I've set out to do. Um, what I use in most of my stuff is I use a large Ron Ransom Hake. There is an extra large one. I've actually never used it, but here's the large. It's about two inches across, inch and a half, really. Then I always I also use the medium Ron Ranson Hake. Now I do have a small Ron Ranson Hake, but I'm telling you, if you look at these two together. They are so close. I don't know if you can see this. Let me put it over here. They are so close. I don't really think it's necessary to have both. Okay. Now, the colors. I use raw sienna, alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, cad yellow or lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, light red, and I may use some uh, burnt sienna, and sometimes I have some Van Dyke brown that I use just for some deeper colors. So that's my palette. Now, when it comes to the painting, and I get people asking me about this, I personally, I don't like to paint from photos. I don't mind if I go outside and I'm, I was doing plain air because you get the experience of like the plain air painting um, and being outdoors so you kind of connect with the subject. But I don't like using photos. I, I'd rather go from something in my imagination and just sort of collect my memories when I'm looking at things. If it doesn't come out the perfect composition or something's a little off, whatever, the important thing is that I enjoyed what I was doing. And I can learn from that. Next time I put together a composition, I might say, you know what, this tree would look better further back or be better if these things were lighter in the background. That, then you can learn from that. But personally, I'm not, I don't want to plan it out. I don't want to draw it out. I'm sure what I'm telling you is like totally wrong. You could do what you want to do. But I'm in this to, uh, really the enjoyment, the therapy of it. If I sell a few paintings along the way, that just, I mean, it helps pay for brushes or, you know, paints and things like that. So, because this stuff's expensive. I mean, it's a tube of paint, a good tube of paint can cost you eight to 12 bucks, depending on what you buy. I like to use like Daniel Smith paints. They're a little more, they have more pigment in there. They'll last longer if someone gets your painting. But I wouldn't mind at some future date down the road, I ha holding classes and teaching other people. I'm not really trying to get into like the art selling business, but like I say, if it pays for things along the way, that's that's all good. And I think when you paint from your imagination, memory, you, uh, it, the, I think it looks spontaneous when it's done. It just looks fresh. It's not like you, when you sit there and you try to paint details, you can tell from looking at it, you could feel the vibe that somebody stressed out when they were making that. You could just feel they tried to, go in there with the little tiny brush and get every little detail. I don't want to do that because this is, again, therapeutic and I don't want to stress over every detail. So I have this blank piece of paper right now and that's exactly what it is. It's blank. I'm going to try to paint something. I'll try to do something very, very quickly from my imagination just to show you you don't have to have a lot of time to do this either. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to take practice. You have to do a lot of paintings to get to a certain point. It's a game of inches. What I'm doing when I lay this down, it's like, wow, that really looks easy, and you want to do it. And you should want to do it because it is fun. But it's going to take you to learn, oh, just a little less here or a little more here. It, it really is a game of inches. The thing that you have to learn to do yourself is the water. It's hard to convey in a video how much water to put on the paper. I like to use a lot of water initially and get the paper good and wet. I will almost go to the point to where water is kind of cascading down. To me, the excitement of the water is what makes the paint and painting feel like it's alive. So I will go over this a couple times so there's a nice sheen on there. If I see water cascading down, that's fine too. The Hake brush holds a lot of water. So the first thing you'll see me do in just about every video is I take raw sienna. And I'll start laying that in. I like to go around the edges. I, sometimes I'm going to put trees in here. A lot of this will be covered up. You'll say, oh, 
he covered up that he covered that up. It's like, why did you go through all that trouble for it? Well, sometimes I don't know I'm going to cover it up. Sometimes I don't like the sky, and I'll use the tree to cover up what I just did. That's just one of the little tricks you can do. So we'll put a little raw sienna in here, and again, this is like creates almost like a lubrication. So when you lay your paint down, it has something to lay and blend on top. And by having multiple colors, it gives some depth and dimension to your painting. So when you're doing this and you say, I'm going to do this totally from the hip, what are you going to do? Well, you know you're going to break a landscape down into several different parts. You're going to have a sky, you're going to have a middle ground, and you're going to have a foreground. And you're also going to have your horizon line that breaks up the whole thing. So the first thing you're going to do is your sky like I've done here. Let's break that up a little bit. Okay, so what are you going to have? Dramatic sky, sunlit sky, cloudy sky, whatever you're going to do. The easiest thing to do is what I'm doing here. I just lay in some clouds. And what I'm doing here, this is going to lay in your background. This is, and this is some ultramarine blue with a little bit of Payne's gray. I don't like straight ultramarine. It's a little too blue. So you're just going to lay this in sort of randomly. There has to be enough paint here to really, so when it dries back, you almost see like a cloud pattern. That's why you see me coming back and I go, oh, and I'll put this, you know, down like this. So some cloud pattern, little dibs and dabs within here to get sort of this effect. So what you're doing here, though, is you're just basically creating the foundational background for the photo or for the painting, I mean, rather. Everything else is going to go on top of this. Let's put in almost some, this This could be water later. This, this You don't have to commit to this being water at this point. If at the end you like it being water, then go ahead and do that. Now, I'm going to dry this because I don't want this to rush into anything else. See, we got some pretty neat effect going on here. I like the way this cloud is looking. So hopefully, I remember not to cover that up with like a tree or something. I'm going to go ahead and do a little drying. Skip ahead if you want. We got some good light going on up in here. I think it's really nice. And I like the way the clouds actually come in here. If I do a tree, I think I might do it on this side. I'm thinking about it as I go. If I was to do a tree this side here, eh, I, I, I like that cloud that I have there. So I want to keep that in mind. So what do we do now? Do we lay in a mountain? Do we start doing some tree pattern formations for a background, go straight across? Do we leave a side open? These are things you're going to start thinking about as you go along and you think, what do I want to do here? We've got a nice little open area. We've got to think about balance. If we have a cloud over here, we're going to have something over here and it's going to balance the photo out or the painting out. I keep saying photo. Um, so let's decide too if we're going to have water going on here. So let's say we're going to have some little hills in the background. Um, maybe like a... Maybe some bluey, greeny hill pattern in the background here. I don't know. This color, it may not even... You want your colors to kind of tie together. So if you do a little too green, it, it may not. It's like decorating your house. You, you know, you, you, you have colors that clash and stuff like that. So what, I did a little green here. We'll do Lean a little more toward the blue side just to kind of work with the, the colors that you already have going on. And I don't like it to look too blue because then it doesn't look natural. I'll put a little bit of Payne's Gray in there just to blend it in. I don't want this too dark, though, because this is, this is more of a distant thing. So there's, there's, we have a little hill here. And we have this little area open here. And then you can actually make, you could actually put some ground in here. So now you have a little flow of the river or water, lake, whatever you want to call it, coming through there. Is that, you're going to have that little shape there. So we have a little bit of this. And maybe we'll just end it here. And then you can see where maybe something would flow there. So you got a little bit of a hill here. Try to keep this straight. In the early days, I used to do things kind of crooked. And even though if you had a picture and it was crooked, it still looks weird as a 
as a uh, as a painting. Now even in here you could you could actually make this you could pull this down and make this reflective. I still haven't really gotten a, a hang of reflections that I like. So this is reflective. In a minute I'll put like a, br a barrier break in here so that it, it looks more like that. Okay, let me stretch the paper a little bit. Now that it's gotten pretty wet, it's starting to buckle just a little bit. So we have our background here. What else are we going to do? I the more I look at this, the more I want to put a tree in there, but I don't want it to. I don't. I don't want to mess up that cloud pattern over there. So maybe we'll just bring this down a little bit. And if I do put in, we want to make this stronger here too, because with this green, we want to because this is the closest thing to us, so the colors get darker as they come along. Or they come closer. So there's that. Okay, so let's see. I know I said I wouldn't put a tree in, but I might put one just off to the side over here because I do want a tree. And I like doing the trees. Really, I should have had, I think I would have rather this hill came this way. And then, now well, even still, it would have blocked some of that and taken away from it. So let's make a tree color up, brown, blue. Put a little bit of Payne's gray. Keep it varied on your brush. And then we're going to go, shoop. We got that there. It doesn't really block that tree too, too much. Or that cloud, rather. And put in our tree arms. Didn't Bob Ross one time call the trees arms on the trees? You keep your uh, brush at a fine point, fine razor's edge. You can actually make the branches just by flicking your hake brush. All right, so let's put a little bit of this down in here. Okay, All right, I still have a little darker, this brownish color. I'm gonna make my brush real razor flat on the edge. And I'm just gonna go along here and I'm gonna create a little bit of a land area here. And that'll break up what we have going on with the reflections. See, now you still have this little river if a boat comes through here, whatever. You know, you see that space where like a boat or something can come through. Okay, so we have this, we have that. We can actually leave, we might leave this tree with, I, I usually put leaves on, but. I might, I might this time just like leave it. Now it is it is green on the ground, so yeah, think about that too. What's the weather patterns going on, and is it winter, summer, whatever? Um, let's see what else can we do here. Make it look a little bit bushier in the background. I like to have a little bit of browns mixed in with my greens, some yellows when that dries, it's going to look very interesting when you go over the top with certain colors. The darker over the lighter, it, it will dry and give you an interesting effect. Now, if I can't find my credit card, I got this little trick I do with the corner of the tube. And like if I want to make little scratches in the paint, it's actually too wet right now. We'll let that dry a little bit. So what else do we want to do with this painting? Is it really enough there? Do we want to get somehow maybe another tree over here? I, don't, I have this thing about trees, and I'm thinking about putting another one in there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I feel another tree. So this other tree has a buddy. Buddy. So let's just uh, start off with the... Just go straight up. Okay. This guy's not going to be real too big. It doesn't have enough real room to be too big over here. Now we have a little something going on here. A 
Okay, let me bring this all the way down. Let's uh, let's just do another tree here, real crooked one. Just looks weird without something there. As you're painting these, you can put them wherever you want. It's your painting. You can do whatever makes you happy. Try not to spend too much time second guessing yourself. In the end, you want to be able to surprise yourself as well. So, got some greens, we got some browns. Almost makes you want to do more of like some green trees. And we're going to do trees. I'm going to put a little lemon yellow on my brush this time. There's other stuff on my brush still, but it should come through. Let's just tap it in, dab it in. You don't want your brush real super wet for this because it'll just look like blobs. You won't get that tree effect. Later on, we'll throw some branches in. Now let's go progressively darker. Add a little bit of blue. But we still want it to green. I don't want it to look blue. We. You can do it how you want to do it. Me. I don't want it that way. So this is going to make for the darker leaves. There's always variation in the leaves. And then there's always darker shadow areas. So if you want, you know, you, the tip should be light in my mind. And I'll put a little bit of Payne's gray on there. So the closer to the tree where the light really wouldn't be able to hit, you get a little of the darkness in there. And just some out here in that little light area. We still got our little light coming through. We got some nice trees over here. What about this guy? We do something similar, more green, tie it in together. Something a little bit more almost of the brown. Just to give it a little, just to tie it in with the with the brown that we already have going on. How about it like more of a reddish brown? We use light red and burnt umber. See what that does. See you can get it. It's a brown, it's brownish. I mean, yeah, you don't, in the fall, you'll see brown leaves, but you want to just get a little variation, tie it together, give a little bit of color in there. Don't go too crazy. A little bit of the Payne's Gray for the shadow areas I like to do. Some leaves. I like to create almost like a little arch. Like these trees are reaching over to each other. So let's grab the... Uh, Number three, rigor brush. It just dropped in my palette. <laughs> and let's do some tree branches. Okay. Burnt umber, some paintings grave, and some blue. I like to get them sort of dark, but I still kind of want it to look brown. I don't want it to look black. No, well, we just flick it. You can do these. I'm sure somebody out there is, and I've seen them, does this way better than me. Just do the holes. Connect some of these little branches, just so your mind makes the connection. I want to overdo it just enough so that you go that's a tree right there little connections there while you got a little bit on your brush you can come and do that little little put a little grass in there and one thing I didn't get back to but that was I wanted to make some some scratches in here using the end of my <laughs> paint tube if you can't find anything else. I know I got a credit card around here though somewhere. Yeah, it's so you lose your card. And then so you grab for whatever you have. And here's another card. This is a, an old hotel room key. And you wanted to put a little 
little bit of rocks in there you can do that here and my paint board a little low here so I can't really reach it I gotta get something bigger for that okay you can even do the little trick that I do I make a little pattern in the in the tree trunk gives it a little texture to it touch it with my finger to kind of blend it a little bit gives it a kind of a neat look to the trunk sometimes now what I do is I go you know this this tree trunk you can't really see it on video but it almost looks really light and gray and I'll darken them up Right in through there. But I want it to be a little bit darker. Just take some of the original colors that you used. Just boom, touch that up. Over here is fine, but I want to put in the little grassy areas here. And then I'm looking back at this little land base thing here, and I just feel like there could be a little bit of something to make just this little land formation look a little more realistic. I'm just touching it with a brush here just to sort of separate that and gives it a little more realism. Take the same color, just dab a little bit more. This here. Okay, so what do we do now? Now it's drying. What I want to do is real quick, I'm just while I'm doing this, I'm going to put my usual couple of birds in. Take my 05 Micron Artist pen and I paint in a few little birdies. Not really a big I don't like painting the birds in it's so fine and your hand starts twitching and you ruin it at the end touch that a little bit I don't want it to look like it's dripping my paint was a little bit wet here and we got some nice effects going a little you can take your fingernail here and add in some more little sticks little stick work so you look at this you go are we done is this, do we do anything else here? Is it, does it need anything? Put a little sailboat in the background. You could do that. Um, you can take, uh, you, this, actually this would be kind of cool. Here, let me dry this for a second. Let's do something different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of paper, it's almost like card photo stock actually, rip it in half, and I'm going to take some paper towel and I'm going to make a little sailboat in the back, but we're also going to make the reflection of that sailboat and put a little spin on it. That's right, if you buy my painting, you get a little of my DNA, a little spit on it. Okay, I know that's gross, right? Okay. So we'll put our little sailboat in here. Make sure it's good and wet and then wipe downward. You're actually lifting the paint out here. So you got that. Now you got your little, see your little boat there? I don't, can you see that? It's, yeah, you can see it. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and make another triangle going down. And then it looks like, eh, maybe we'll do a little bigger. A little bit larger. And what do we do here? We 
just got a little bit of made a little bit of a mess down below here. And I transferred a little paint from the card. No worries though. No worries. I uh paint was still a little bit wet on the bottom. So I'm just wiping off a little bit of the excess. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little rigger brush. I'm gonna put a little bottom of that boat in. Just right here. This is the only detail. I don't really see me do too much other detail. Just to give that boat a bottom to it. So now we have a little bit of a reflection. A few more little blades of grass will have dark paint on my brush. Okay, it looks like we have a finished painting here. And actually by lifting a little bit of paint out here, I created actually a cool little effect. By And you can lift, you can actually go in with, you can lift out all kinds of little things if you want to. But it's created actually a nice effect by lifting some of this paint back out on the water here. It actually gave it a little shine here. So that's what the Bob Ross would call a happy accident. Let's zoom in on this painting now. And we have our tree with our little more browns tying into some of the browns on the bottom. You know what you could do too is, um, I've been, been kind of watching, someone told me about making your, uh, your, your foreground a little warmer. I'm gonna do that now. Add a little light red and a little brown. And we'll just put a little bit in here, just to just for some warmth in in the bottom, just to give it a little extra warmth there. Take a little bit of the the darker brown, just a just dabbing it in a little bit. just to give a little bit more warmth in the foreground there. And let's try it. There are a few little scratches in there. A little texture. Ron Ranson calls this knuckle work. That should do it. Okay, let's take a look now. See, we've got our ground sort of tying in with the brown and the trees, green tying in here, a nice little sky with the light. We've got the uh, sailboat with its little reflection tying in with this reflection here. And another thing you can do, now I don't know that I want to do that. You can actually put little ripples in there too if you want to. If you want to, you can do it with a, uh, you don't have to do it with a brush. You can do it with a brush. I'll do it with a brush this time, but you can put like a, just a, and make it wet. If you're doing it with a small brush, it just needs to be a little wet. You can put some little ripples in the water there to break it up. And then, so it looks more like a reflection. You can actually do a little bit of that back here. It'll break that up a little bit. I don't want to get too close to that boat, but I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see that. If 
and I'm actually lifting out a little paint, created a, a little ripple effect in the in the water there. All right. See how you always go? Oh, I'm gonna add something else. You can do it later. See the little little ripples in the water there. So that's it. We've got our trees, our little birds, light coming down. And this is a painting you can give to a friend. You can give them somebody as a gift and say, hey, I made this. But don't give it to them until you sign it. <laughs> Where do we sign it? This is always a problem for me. Like, I don't want my name to like be like obtrusive to, to the painting. So I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna do it over here. That's it. That's it. A few little scratches in there. I like to do that, just a little excess. And that's it. I hope you got something out of this and you enjoyed. Kind of a longer video, but uh, I wanted to talk through a few things. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you do any similar paintings, post them, do a video or something. Let's uh, bring painting back again. Instead of looking down at our phones and our little tablets and things and get back to creating. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like my videos. Bye-bye.